3,000 years. The real history of the craft, as it is called, varies from one source to another and is a continued thorn of controversy. Masons claim biblical origins dating back to Tubal Cain, the first craftsman, as well as Nimrod, who built the Tower of Babel and founded the ancient city of Babylon. King Solomon plays an important role, as Masons are said to have been the builders of the Great Temple in Jerusalem. No less important is the influence of Gnosticism, sometimes called the mother of Masonry. According to Masonic historian Albert Mackey, Gnosticism is where Masonry gets the mysterious letter G, as seen here in the midst of the Masonic square and compass, a symbol that often adorns Masonic tombstones. Known for rejecting the biblical gospels, the Gnostics claim to be the real Christians, an issue the apostles spoke vehemently against in the New Testament. The Gnostic Gospels have been promoted by writers like Elaine Pagels and celebrities such as Jane Fonda. It was the Gnostic teachings that formed the heart of Dan Brown's blockbuster book, The Da Vinci Code. The Gnostics were known to express a humanistic view of Christ, a view they are said to have exploited for the purpose of justifying their debauchery of women. Hence, the tales of Jesus and his alleged relationship with Mary Magdalene, a view often attributed to the Gnostics and repeated in Brown's controversial book. But Masonry's most popular debates, especially with films like National Treasure and books such as The Da Vinci Code, Born in Blood and Holy Blood, Holy Grail, seem to involve the mysterious Knights Templar, whose connection to Freemasonry is often seen at the Rossland Chapel in Scotland's capital city of Edinburgh, a place that not only reveals much about the Templars and Masonry, but within may be secrets to the founding of the new world. But whatever the connection or controversy, most Masons trace their craft back to the mysteries of ancient Egypt. Egypt is like pretty much the proximate fountainhead of all esoteric mystery teaching. After the example of the Egyptian craftsmen, the Masons carved their own imagery in the great structures of Europe. Secret signs and symbols were embedded into their work, the meaning of which was to be hidden from outsiders. These were the craft Masons who actually built the temples. If you look at European architecture, you know those, all those big cathedrals in Europe, Cologne Cathedral in Germany, uh, Notre Dame in Paris, Salisbury Cathedral in England, and all those beautiful cathedrals were all built around the 1200s and 1300s. And it was these Masons who knew their business and they wanted to keep their skills secret. All the great cathedrals of Europe were built by stonemasons who had an understanding of esoteric lore, and they're basically riddles in stone. When masons came to America, they practiced their trade in the same way they had in Europe, embedding secret codes within the design and foundation of the American colonies. Some believe this may account for the geographic location of the five great Revolutionary War cities. In particular, Boston, New York, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. have all been built in perfect alignment along the eastern seaboard. Researcher Jim Allison believes this alignment may be a part of something greater. Let me say this, I think it is very unlikely that the alignment is coincidental. According to Allison, the alignment of cities and ancient sites are part of a series of great circles that encompass the Earth. 
These circles are supposedly like lines of power upon which significant sites are built. The simplest example, the most obvious example of a great circle, though, is the equator. Because it runs around the center of the Earth, it runs due east-west. Meridians of longitude, which run due north-south through the north and south poles, if you extend it all the way around, those are also great circles because they run through the center of the Earth. Allison claims that mystical sites like the pyramids, Easter Island, the Mayan and Aztec cities are all built upon these great circles. In addition, one of these great circles contains the five cities that date back to the era of the American Revolutionary War. Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Baltimore, New York City, and Boston are, in fact, aligned. They're fairly close together. The distance from Washington, D.C. to Boston is 400 miles. And as a result of that, you can, you can see the alignment uh, just on a flat map because the, the curvature of the Earth is not so much over that distance um, to, to distort it. But on a, on a three-dimensional map, it's, it's even clearer. But is this just a curious coincidence? Or could there be some hidden meaning behind it? In the 1920s, an Englishman named Alfred Watkins noted a series of straight tracks or lines upon the Earth's surface that seemed to connect the ancient monuments and holy sites around the world. What he found was that in a number of cases, a number of these monuments were aligned in just in dead straight lines that extended from a few miles to in some cases many miles. He coined the term ley lines to describe and to explain these alignments. Um, Watkins believed that there are some type of grid lines that run through the earth, of lines of energy or magnetism or electromagnetism or some other kind of attraction over the earth. And that's what, that's what he described as ley lines. Um, Watkins believed that the builders of these sites were aware of these lines that ran through the earth and that they intentionally built these monuments on these lines. While Watkins' findings were not openly received by all, his views have been most often embraced by members of the esoteric community. In the occult, there's this concept of ley lines, L-E-Y, uh, which are lines of force that are that some people say are like the acupuncture points of the earth. And you always want to build things on a ley line. All of the great cathedrals of Europe are built upon these ley lines which are like currents of power. These currents of power are thought to have magical significance. Some believe they act as portals for spirits to travel to and from the ancient monuments that fall within these alignments. But the question remains, were such power lines important to the builders of early American cities? Were they aligned with a secret purpose in mind? It's very important where the, the pyramid of Khufu is built, the Great Pyramid. And it's very important where Stonehenge is built. There are several great circles that ancient monuments are aligned with and in some cases ancient and modern development is aligned with. Extending the alignment from Boston to the northeast uh, towards Europe, the alignment crosses over the Atlantic and crosses into England and crosses over Stonehenge, which of course is one of the more significant monuments certainly in England and, and arguably anywhere. Can it be coincidental that the early colonists built these five cities in perfect alignment with each other and in perfect alignment with Stonehenge? Allison admits that many of the ancient monuments are aligned on ley lines or great circles within a fraction of one degree, a distance that sometimes equals 15 or 20 miles. But in the link between the old world and the new, there is a zero deviation between the five American cities and England's mysterious Stonehenge.
According to Allison, they are perfectly aligned. Can such a perfect alignment be unintentional or the result of some natural attraction of ley lines in the earth? There's some dispute about that amongst people who, who study these ley lines as to whether um, the builders were aware of an attraction and they built it for that reason or whether there was possibly an attraction that they were unaware of but nonetheless caused them to build these sites in alignment. But the, the simple fact is they are aligned. But the evidence continues. America's capital city, Washington, D.C., is said to be positioned on the 77th meridian west, considered a sacred location referred to as God's longitude. In his book, Marking Time, author Duncan Steele argues that the early expedition of Sir Walter Raleigh, known for the lost colony at Roanoke, was not quite the failure it seemed to be. Raleigh's intent, according to Steele, was not really to establish a colony, but rather to capture God's longitude by locating the 77th meridian. And the goal of the occultist who understands these concepts is to have things exist within the sacred harmonies of the earth. And if indeed they believe that the 77th meridian was somehow very sacred, then it would be incredibly important for them to, to plant their flag there. In Washington, D.C. is even found Meridian Hill, said to mark the precise location of the sacred longitude. Raleigh himself was a member of Bacon's secret society in England. Was he sent on a mystical journey so that America might be designed according to esoteric principles from the beginning? and how many others came ashore as a result of the Baconian influence. The Rosicrucians came ashore very early on in the founding of the New World. Uh, the Masons were also there from the beginning. And uh, I think from very early on, this, this if you will, um, cartel, this occult cartel of various groups, basically had it as their goal to establish a society on this continent that was wholly given over to esoteric goals. The Rosicrucian Order, with its modern headquarters in San Jose, California, has for centuries been linked to Freemasonry. Well, you have to understand that Freemasonry is simply of the modern day manifestation of the ancient mystery of religions. The ideas of masonry were, have been around literally for thousands of years. And of course, Rosicrucianism uh, was simply a, a forerunner of modern day masonry. The order takes its name from its primary symbol, the rose and cross. Like masonry, the Rosicrucians trace their religion to the mysteries of ancient Egypt. Their power base in San Jose centers around an Egyptian museum. There are chapters of the Rosicrucians studying every place across America. And one only has to go up on the internet and you, they actually have websites where they recruit people into the Rosicrucian order. People have no idea that uh, these people are even here. Perhaps the reason for their lack of exposure is that they are dwarfed by the chief of all secret societies, the ancient order of Freemasonry. Nevertheless, the Rosicrucians are said to be the first of the secret orders to have opened a door in the New World. The very first that we know of occult beachhead in America was Rosicrucian. I just, I was out on a speaking tour recently and I had the opportunity to visit the Ephrata Cloister, it's called, in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. And it's where the original Rosicrucian community built its, its headquarters, uh, right, right on the east coast of the United States. And that was in the 1600s. And right about the same time that Christianity was establishing its